whatever walk of life, from bug to bear, we are all under threat. Every second, somewhere, something goes wrong for an animal. There's a fight or an attack. What decides our fate? Is it predetermined who lives or dies? Or do we take our chances, living our lives constantly, seconds from disaster? Plumes of smoke, a volcano warning of impending disaster. A new day is dawning over the African plains. It's the start of something big. The animals seem to anticipate a change in the air. The wildebeest have arrived. Millions of them swarm onto the plains every summer. They are here to give birth. Within the space of a few weeks, hundreds of thousands of babies are delivered. A happy event or a reminder of the challenges of life? Many of these young animals won't live long. Is it a question of fate that determines who lives and who dies? Are the successes and failures of these babies predetermined? Already, some of the youngsters are seconds from disaster. This mother's made a good decision and delivers her calf right into the center of the herd. Could it be that he and his mother are destined for a long and happy life? Or will he have to face the many dangers of the plains alone? From equator to poles, babies are facing the challenges of life. Polar bears rule the Arctic, the unchallenged top predators. But even with one of the most formidable mothers on earth, the future of these cubs is far from assured. There could be disaster around every corner. The cubs struggle to keep up with mum. The youngest of the daughters calls shotgun, the safest seat in the house. Mum gets tired of the Klingon. Polar bear cubs spend several years with their mothers to learn the tricks of their trade.
She produces some of the richest milk on earth to give them a head start. There is plenty on tap, but that doesn't stop the siblings from squabbling. Mother doesn't intervene. The wrestling will help build the cub's strength and agility. The bear family will spend most of their life on ice. Sea ice that covers the Arctic during winter. It can be 20 meters deep. Despite the cold, the waters beneath are teeming with life, drawing in other polar specialists to breed. Ringed seals use their claws and teeth to carve out snow caves that they can use as a nursery. For their first few weeks, the pups will need to lie low. Their luxurious white fur keeps them warm, but only works when it's dry. So the pup must stay alone while its mother uses holes in the ice to dive for fish. Though the seals are active hunters of fish, in this desolate landscape, there are many larger predators that would gladly have a seal supper. For now, the mother enjoys a brief respite from the cold seas, affording the pup a chance to feed. Alert members of the capybara family watch over the herd. These giant rodents enjoy nothing more than basking on the banks of the Amazon River. But the dense vegetation and murky waters harbor many threats. Several males watch over the females and young. The babies in the herd form a creche, hanging out together to play. Though they were able to eat grass from just a week old, they will suckle for four months. The mothers in the group will suckle other pups, not just their own. It seems like a blissful life, but in the Amazon, there are many predators, and the plump-bodied capybaras are a favorite prey. The pine-sized pups ought to spend more time looking out for danger and less time annoying the adults. It's this type of distraction that can spell disaster.
Thanks to the 500,000 newborns, the Serengeti herd has swollen to around 2 million. They are doing well, but there are a lot of mouths to feed. The plains can only produce a limited amount of grass. And so more than predators, accidents or natural disasters, the biggest threat to the wildebeest's lives is running out of food. 75% of all deaths are caused by starvation. For that reason, the herd must keep on the move, making sure they don't stay too long and overgraze any one place. The masses of megafauna attract an abundance of predators. Cheetahs are famous for their speed, but to achieve that title, they've had to sacrifice bulk. Lightweight and lanky, a single cheetah would really struggle to tackle a wildebeest. But male cheetahs, usually brothers from the same litter, form coalitions. Now with combined might, they confidently approach any prey. Patrolling the herd, they look for any signs of weakness. The female puts up a good fight, but she can't fend off all three attackers. Disaster could be around the corner for any member of the herd, but today, this unlucky one will feed the cheetahs, meaning the rest of the herd will live to see another day. The mother polar bear keeps her cubs close to her side. She knows how deadly the world can be. But the little ones are carefree. They don't seem to be aware of the risks. But disasters can occur anywhere, even right under their mother's nose. We all imagine predation to be the main threat to life, but more animals die from accidents than anything else.
Worried sisters try to get the little female out, but the hole's too deep and slippery. At first, Mother doesn't seem to notice how close her family is to disaster. But the big sister rushes for help. Eventually, Mum gets the message. An expert in excavating snow caves, it doesn't take long for her powerful limbs to dig their way in and reunite the family. Foreboding skies create an atmosphere for the creatures of the Amazon. The capybara family is enjoying some time out of the water. Their favorite food is grass, and when the temperature isn't too hot, they leave the riverbank to graze. A caracara offers a pest control service, picking off fleas and ticks. But it doesn't work for free. It seems to take a drop of blood as payment for services rendered. The predatory bird is no threat to the family, but it's not the only hunter on the prowl. The jaguar, the biggest cat on the continent, and for its size, the strongest and most muscular of all cats. Its favorite food, capybara. Many birds hop around the capybara. They could make life difficult for the predator, offering an early warning system. But with the herd spread out to graze, there are fewer pairs of eyes watching over the crash. Thank <laughs> you. 
The capybara's main line of defense is to dive for cover. But the jaguar can also swim. Even the crash the babysitters or the watchful birds weren't enough. It's a fact of life that for all creatures, sooner or later, disaster will strike. Whether or not they survive is partly luck and partly good decisions. The mountains of East Africa stop the passage of clouds. Moisture can't get to the plains. As the landscape dries, the animals are feeling the pinch. They need to take action, keeping the herd on the move, going from waterhole to waterhole. But this one, like so many others, is drying up. Mud can be an unexpected enemy. Like quicksand, it sucks their bodies down. The smallest calves barely have the strength to pull themselves free. Fighting the mud may result in damaged limbs but an animal that stays trapped risks starvation. And either way, it's a beacon to predators. Luckily, the lion pride has recently eaten and needs to rest up in the shade and digest. A moment's reprieve. Perhaps fate is smiling on our calf today. He manages to wriggle free. But now he faces a far greater threat. He's lost his mother. He tries to find comfort. He now faces a terrifying prospect. He can't survive without his mother's milk. Luckily, his mother is also looking for him. Their bond is strong and neither will give up. Exhausted and thirsty, she finds him just in the nick of time. Disaster averted, they rejoin the herd. He's been lucky once, but for this little one, his challenges are just beginning. He needs to regain his strength, ready for the biggest and most dangerous journey of his young life. He'll need to keep up for over 1,000 kilometers. The Great Migration has begun. Another trek is getting underway. The polar bear family 
is on the move. The great bears spend their entire lives walking in an endless quest for food. They need to make the most of spring. As it gets hotter, it will change the landscape and they'll find themselves walking on thin ice. Spring is also a busy time for another Arctic specialist. But it comes at a price. A big blubbery seal pup would make a feast for a hungry polar bear. And mother bear has picked up the scent. Seconds from disaster, the adult seal uses a breathing hole in the ice to disappear, leaving the helpless pup. The pups are designed to stay dry above water thanks to their woolly coats. But this brave pup's not afraid to take the plunge. His bravery saved his life. He's a bit cold, but alive. It's an eat or be eaten world. With predators everywhere, You'd think animals would try and stay hidden away, especially when they're starting a family. But the Dickops, African wading birds, have chosen to nest right alongside a crocodile. Is this insanity? No, they are cunning parents and doing their best to prevent a disaster rather than cause it. They are nesting here, knowing that a crocodile is about the best deterrent they can get. It's like owning a really big, mean guard dog. With such intimidating home security, Egg-thieving animals, like baboons, don't dare approach. But there is one thief who tries to sneak in under the radar. A hungry monitor lizard. It looks like a tragedy is imminent, but these feisty birds are not going to sit back and take it. They mob the monitor. Imposing wings and sharp beaks drive the message home. Another disaster averted. It doesn't matter how big or small you are. Every day you step out in search of food, you are putting yourself at risk. A scorpion, a top predator on the prowl. It hunts insects and other tiny prey.
But like all animals, it too can be seconds from disaster. The bigger bug is a predatory praying mantis. Even choosing which fork of a river can dictate whether you live or die. And any fish that have swam this stretch will pay for its bad decision. The crocodiles let the current bring lunch to them. Lining up jaw to jaw, they can make sure that few catfish get past them. The reptile roadblock is very effective. But despite the rich pickings, it's hard to eat a meal in peace. The birds seem to be inviting disaster, but for them, it's worth hanging out near the jaws of death. In case any interesting scraps are dropped. A cheetah mother has found a shady spot for her tiny cubs. It should provide a safe hideout for the little ones. But she doesn't know that she's picked a spot in the heart of lion country. A decision that could affect the fate of her entire family. Within seconds, a pride have surrounded the litter. Drawn by her scent, the much bigger lions are determined to rid their patch of any competition. The cubs push back into the scrub, but the lions are not going to be thrown off the scent. Many predators instinctively want to destroy other carnivores on their patch. The cubs will be using resources that their own young might need. The cheetahs have to go. The frantic mother needs to do something, but it's a gamble. If she's injured or killed, she won't be able to fend for the cubs and they will starve. She uses the only tool available to her, her speed. She needs to lure the attackers away. It looks like the plan's working. Two of the cubs make a dash for it. But the third is missing.
It's disaster for the young family, but could have been a lot worse. The lion cub won't have to face any cheetah competition, but the African Plains is ready to throw him a new challenge. Hot, dry days cause storms to build. But to a dry grassland, lightning can spell disaster. It only takes a spark. The results spread like wildfire. Bushfires appear devastating but they are a vital part of many ecosystems. They recycle nutrients by fertilizing the soil with ash. But regardless of their benefits to the landscape, they can spell disaster for the animals of the plains. Creatures that have size and speed on their side can outrun the flames. It's harder for the little guys. The wildebeest herd watches as their home goes up in flames. Marabou storks and other opportunists pace like undertakers along the edges of the blaze, waiting to snatch any small creatures flushed out by the fire or to pick over the carcasses of the dead. At ground level, it's carnage. Once flames have swept across the plains, there is little for grazers like the wildebeest to eat. Once again, the herd must move on. The sun sets, but the wildlife remains illuminated by the destruction. Thank you.
there are still some that benefit from the death of others. A nocturnal bush baby emerges to snatch a barbecued cricket. By dawn, the fire's burnt itself out. Animals pick over the charred remains amid a fog of ash. Set adrift once more, the herds march on, our growing calf still flanking his mother. Once they get clear of the scorched earth, dry grasses give the wildebeest a much needed meal. But as they feed up and rest, new tribulations await. They were not the only ones displaced by the flames. A cheetah. With its spotted coat, the speedy cat goes unseen in the dry grass. The cheetah is not alone, its brother joins the chase. This young wildebeest must flee for its life. Another youngster lost. For grazers, the predators of the plains are constant harbingers of death. but an even more deadly force lies ahead. The drying plains are hard on the herds, but the summer's tough for these guys too. The river's drying up and crocodiles are forced together, hungry, grouchy, fighting over every scrap and waiting impatiently for food to come. It's not a good place for a catfish to hang out. They know that a banquet will soon be served. They just have to sit tight and let it come to them. and it will come. The wildebeest know crocodiles hide in the rivers, but they have no choice. If they stay on the dry plains, they face death by dehydration. Caught between a rock and a hard place, it's a recipe for disaster. Mm. 
Seemingly sensing their impending doom, the anxious wildebeest make a cautious approach. It seems no one wants to go first. But the volume of animals barging from behind push the herd leaders closer to the front line. This is the moment the crocs have been waiting for. Not a great start for the hungry predators. But they know thirst will bring the herd back. The wildebeest are even more jittery now, every ripple making them jump. But panic can cause bad reactions. To survive, they need to keep their cool and stay alert. With deadly speed, the crocodile lunges like a scaly torpedo powered by its thick muscular tail. The first of the herd falls to their jaws. The crocodiles work together to clamp onto the meat. Their death rolls twist the carcass so they can pull off mouthfuls of flesh. Again and again the herd must approach, and again the crocodiles strike. It's the young wildebeest's turn to drink. Judgment day. Is he destined to meet his doom in the jaws of death? Or is he one of the lucky ones, a survivor? With all his might, he leaps into the air. This time, he was lucky. But the close call is a reminder. No matter how careful, thoughtful, or even lucky, we all spend our lives seconds from disaster.